If you've ever tried splash shot photography, you know how frustrating that process can become. Drop after drop for hours, it seems, with no usable photographs. Well, that was certainly my experience. But we've developed a process which will enable you to take beautiful splash shots with predictability and within minutes of your setup. We will show you a step-by-step -step process that will have you capturing excellent shots in no time. We'll start with the supplies you'll need. Of course, first you will need the MyOps Splash Unit and the MyOps Smartphone application. Notice the two lines on the receiving tube that I've drawn there. One at four inches above the collar and one at three inches. And we'll come back to the reason for that later. MyOps makes an extension cord that connects the splash unit to your camera and that extension comes highly recommended. It's really useful. The splash unit itself does come with a cord when you purchase it, but it's too short for this application. Tap water alone can be used for splash shots, but the quality of images is very much improved by adding a thickening agent to increase the drop solution viscosity. And after trying several thickeners, xanthan gum turned out to be the thickener of choice. I recommend purchasing two half-gallon plastic water bottles. You will need one to store the concentrated solution and one to store a diluted solution that will be used in creating your splash shots. Of course, food coloring provides color to the splash shots. I also use a funnel with a strainer when pouring the concentrate solution into one of the plastic storage bottles which has been labeled concentrate. The second bottle, which I mark with a permanent marker at the 20 ounce level and the 64 ounce level, will be used for the diluted solution. You'll need a flat cookie sheet to contain the spillage of drop solution overflow that will occur as you take photographs, a receiving water bowl, and a metal triangle ruler, preferably in black, although white does work. A measuring tape is generally required to take measurements of the height of the nozzle above the receiving water surface. After experimenting with numerous sizes and shapes of bowls, my most consistent results came when using an eight and a quarter by an eight and a quarter bowl that is 1.25 inches deep. I found it at America's largest discount chain for 50 cents and it's available in several fashionable colors. Positioning the MyOp splash over the water bowl is much easier when you use an articulated extension arm with a weighted base. It takes up much less room in the setup than does the tripod. And adjusting the height of the splash unit is really a breeze. Making the drop solution is straightforward. I use one teaspoon of xanthan gum and 64 ounces of water, heat the water until it's near boiling, and begin to slowly sift the xanthan gum into the water because xanthan has a tendency to really quickly clump if you add it too quickly. Stir until all the powder is thoroughly mixed and pour the contents into one of the 64 ounce bottles labeled concentrate and let it cool overnight. The final drop solution is made by diluting the concentrated solution. Slowly pour the concentrate into the funnel with the strainer and carefully fill to the 20 ounce level. Now fill a second bottle of water right up to the 64 ounce mark and add about two ounces of food coloring. This will be the solution used for both filling the MyOp splash tube and the receiving water bowl. The drop fall distance is set using a tape measure or, in my case, a prefabricated contraption that's 14 inches from the base to the top. Turn the bowl upside down, place the measuring tool or tape measure tip on the bottom of the bowl, then position the MyOp splash nozzle right at the tip of the measuring tool or at the 14 inch mark on a tape measure. And this 14 inch mark is pretty critical. Now, let's take a look at the shooting setup. Place the bowl near the back of the cookie sheet. That provides more space in front of the water splash and makes for better reflection in the water in your photographs. It also adds a bit of distance between the camera lens and the point at which the water drops strike the surface. I use something behind the bowl to act as a backdrop and it's usually an 8x10 photo that's just been placed on cardstock backing. This is the setup with placement of the elements including the flash location. 
I normally only use one flash, but sometimes a second light comes in handy to illuminate a dark background card. Fill the bowl as close to the brim as possible with the drop solution, and then fill a Myop splash tube with fluid to within about one and a half inches of the top. Very gently replace the top of the tube to prevent water gushing out. I, I, I learned the hard way. Attach the external power cord and the extension cord that connects the splash unit with your camera. We have to determine the focus point where the drop strikes the surface of the receiving water. So activate the Myop splash and watch where the drop impacts the water. Then place the black triangle ruler with the lower leading edge at the point where the water drop impacted the surface. Then you can look through the camera viewfinder and focus on the numbers on the ruler. Works really well and you should be ready to go. These are my camera settings. Nikon D850 full frame camera. Shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. F-stop varies between F8 and F11. ISO of 400 and manual focus. The lens is a Nikon 105 macro lens. I use a Nikon SB700 flash unit in manual mode, set at remote, with 1 16th power. And I use the Nikon SU800 wireless commander to trigger the flashes. Open the MyOps app on your mobile device and wait until the app recognizes the splash unit. The first step in the sequence is to set the timing for a single drop. Enter 35 milliseconds as the drop size. Now set the trigger time at 270 milliseconds. This is the time that it takes a drop of water to travel 14 inches from the nozzle tip to the water surface. The water drop should be at or very near the surface. Now add a second drop in the sequence with a drop size of 50 milliseconds and a 70 millisecond delay time for the second drop. The last step is to set the trigger delay time and that value should be set at 185 milliseconds as a starting point. Take a shot and see how the splash shot looks. The experience has found that this trigger delay can vary by as much as 15 milliseconds and if present that variance is typically longer, sometimes up to as much as 200 milliseconds. So, if 185 milliseconds is not quite correct, make any changes to the camera trigger delay in small increments of about 5 milliseconds until you find the perfect timing. A few helpful tips as we finish up. Take your time, go slowly. Let 20 to 30 seconds pass before taking every shot. After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion. The solution tube on the splash has a sweet spot that's about three to four inches from the tube base collar, hence the markings on the water tube. If the water level is outside that one inch area, the drops are much less consistent. So don't be disheartened if the first few splashes after filling the tube are not perfect because as the water level reaches the sweet spot on the tube, the photos should improve quickly. Try to reduce vibration as much as possible. Ripples in the receiving solution or movement in the splash unit will result in inconsistency such that a second drop does not squarely strike the first drop rebound and the resultant photo generally lacks symmetry. As a note, using the extension cable solve much of that issue for us. Avoid pouring food color into the tube. It can result in having to take the apparatus apart and cleaning the interior of the splash unit. The last tip relates to maintaining the splash unit. At some point, either the interior solenoid or the nozzle will become a bit gummed up, which results in phantom drops of water appearing in the image. This situation requires taking the unit apart and cleaning the interior mechanisms. Now there are several very good videos online demonstrating this process, which is actually very simple. There we are. I hope this video helps you take some great splash shot. It sure works for us.
Our experience has found that the trigger delay can vary. That was a burp. Experience has found that this trigger delay can vary by as much as 15 milliseconds. And if present, that variance is usually Experience has found that this trigger delay can vary by as much as 15 milliseconds. And if present, that variance is typically longer, sometimes up to as much as 200 milliseconds. So, if 185 milliseconds is not quite correct, make any changes to the camera trigger delay in small increments of about 5 milliseconds until you find the perfect timing. Okay. A few helpful tips as we finish up. First, take your time, go slowly. Let about 20 to 30 seconds pass before taking the second shot. A few helpful tips as we finish up. Take your time, go slowly. Let 20 to 30 seconds pass before taking every shot. After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion. The solution tube on the splash has a sweet spot somewhere about three to four inches from the tube base collar, hence the markings on the water tube. If the water level is outside that one inch area, the drops become After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion and that there is a solution <sighs> After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion. The solution tube on the splash has a sweet spot, which is about three to four inches above the tube base collar, hence the markings on the water tube. If the water level is out. After many long hours of taking some, I'm not going to quit. After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion. The solution tube on the splash has a sweet spot that's about three to four inches from the tube base collar, hence the markings on the water tube. So if the water level is outside that one inch area, the drops are much more inconsistent. So don't be disheartened if in the first few splashes after filling the tube, if the shots aren't perfect because the water level reaches the sweet spot. <laughs> After many long hours of taking After many long hours of taking splash shots, a friend and I came to the same conclusion. The solution tube on the splash has a sweet spot that's about three to four inches from the tube base collar. Hence the markings on the water tube. If the water level is outside that one inch area, the drops are much less consistent. So don't be disheartened if the first few splashes after filling the tube are not perfect because as the water level reaches the sweet spot on the tube, the photos should improve quickly. Try to reduce vibration as much as possible. Ripples in the receiving solution or movement in the splash unit will result in inconsistency such that a second drop does not squarely strike the first drop rebound, and the resultant photo generally lacks symmetry. As a note, Using the extension cable solved much of that issue for us. Avoid pouring food color into the tube. It can result in having to take the apparatus apart and cleaning the interior of the splash unit. The last tip relates to the maintaining of the splash unit. At some point, either the interior solenoid or nozzle will become gummed up, which result in phantom drops The last tip relates to maintaining the splash unit. At some point, either the interior solenoid or the nozzle will become a bit gummed up, which results in phantom drops of water appearing in the image. This situation requires taking the unit apart and cleaning the interior mechanisms. 
Now there are several very good videos online demonstrating this process, which is actually very simple. So I hope this video helped. There we are. I hope this video helps you take some great splash shot. It sure works for us.